Hey you guys, it's Peter. And I'm back. Of course I'm back. I'm not going anywhere. Boost! All right, let's get right into this video. This video is, I mean, it's not super serious, but the subject matter to me is a little bit more serious than a typical video on here. So I just kind of want to get right into this. This has been a really, really highly requested video. I have received tons of DMs from people asking me to comment on what happened with Logan Paul and all this kind of stuff. So I'm going to address that in just a second. But uh, before I get into this video, which I have a very strong opinion about, um, I would like to just congratulate Elijah Daniel and his fiance Sam, his boyfriend Sam, um, on their engagement as of yesterday. Um, I think it's awesome. I think it's amazing. And I also predicted it in my predictions video. But, um, you know, I think I was thinking about this before I started making this video. I was thinking about at the end of my life, when I look back on all of the things that I was able to be part of in my life and the things that will stand out to me and the things that will really matter to me in my last days. One of the things that will stand out to me um, is being able to be part of the fight for the legalization of same-sex marriage. And so to see that continue to live out, not just with my husband and I, but um, with further generations is amazing and it's awesome. So I want to congratulate the both of them. Um, okay, so if you don't know, which you don't know is a lot, Logan Paul in a podcast the other day, and I'm not going to include the clips every, you know, it's, it's all over the place. Um, in a podcast the other day, he said that he was talking about New Year's resolutions and what they're going to do for each month and that in January they're doing like vegan month and sober month and then in February they're going to like eat a lot of meat and drink a lot and then in March they're going to do um, all male March and that they're going to go, he's going to go gay in March. Well, this was not received well on the internet. And, um, you know, it's interesting to me because I was watching a lot of the videos that have been put out about this and a lot of what people had said. And there's a lot of anger and there's a lot of animosity and there's a lot of, like, uh, outrage and all this kind of stuff. And, and I totally understand it, right? I have been out for 28 years. I came out when I was 18 years old. And, um, and I'm 46 uh, now. I came out on my 18th birthday. And, you know, in 28 years, I've learned that there are many different ways to fight a good fight, if that makes sense. And one of the things I've learned is when I allow people to get to know who I am, not just based on my sexuality or who I love or whose hand I choose to hold or who I choose to lay next to at the end of the night or who I choose to go out to dinner with or whose family I get to be part of, you know, um, then they get to see who I am as a person inside and out and not judge me on my sexuality. I think that we always want to go to this idea that when, you know, somebody says something about gay, being gay jokingly, or I'm going to go gay from a straight point of view or whatever, we want to take it immediately into the bedroom and we want to make it immediately about sex. And, you know, it's interesting to me because when I look back on my life, those were not the things I struggled with the hardest, you know? When I look back, and I've made videos, I've done coming out videos on my channel, I, I did a whole video about me being bullied, I will link those at the end. I was bullied horrifically growing up from, you know, first grade all the way through. Um, I still deal with it in gas stations and car dealerships and, you know, just all over the place. Like, I, you know, deal with ignorance and um, lack of understanding and people making fun of my voice and people making fun of my mannerisms and all that, you know? And, um, but when I look back on my life and I look back on the struggle, right? It was never a sexual struggle, if that makes sense. Like, you know, it was always for me about having butterflies in my stomach or having a crush on somebody and being afraid of them finding that out or what that might be like. It was more about what would my family think of me? Would my family be accepting of me? Would they still love me after they found out that maybe I wasn't who they thought I was? Would my friends still accept me? Would my friends still care about me? Would they see me as just who I was the moment before I told them that I was gay? So when we say, I'm going to be gay or I'm gay, it's much more than just a sexual act or, you know, a New Year's resolution. It's a story. There's a story that goes along with that. And I think that one of the things that Logan Paul doesn't understand, even though he's come out now and apologized for it and all this, is that, um, you know, what you're really doing is you're taking away the stories of millions and millions of people out there in the LGBTQIA plus community. And that's really sad and really unfair, honestly. And if I have to say anything, the, the thing that I would say is, 
out of all of the people that I'm worried about out there, the one person I'm worried about, of which I'm sure there's more than one, but the one person that I would be really worried about if I was Logan Paul and he really cares about his fan base is the one person sitting on the other side of the computer watching his videos, watching his podcast, listening to his podcast, that inside feels different, that inside knows that they're gay or you know bisexual or however they identify and that they do not um, feel the same as everybody else that they see around them. And all of a sudden, they see Logan Paul, somebody they look up to, making fun of that and joking. And now what they've heard is, it's not okay to be who I wanna be in my own skin. The problem with that is, that is the universe that I grew up in. I came out in 1990, and you know, I think today we live in a different world. You know, we live in a pop culture world where there are a lot of celebrities that are out, there are a lot of YouTubers that are out and things like that. And I'm so thankful for those YouTubers that have paved the road for us, you know, that people can get on video at any time and watch, you know, anybody from the LGBTQIA plus spectrum and hear their story. There are so many of them and I, you know, don't wanna just, you know, pick out five or six, but you know, when I look at Joy Graceffa and Daniel Prada or Shane Dawson, you know, and his boyfriend Ryland, or, you know, Gigi Gorgeous, and you know, just on and on and on, and Kyle Craiger, there are so many, Tyler Oakley, there are so many stories out there of normalcy within the LGBTQIA plus community that allows people to realize I am no different, I am just like you, except for who I love and how I feel inside my skin. And I think what's important about that is that we have to see those stories and we have to, you know, realize that we aren't any different and people need to see that out there. And if they don't, if the message they hear is you are different, they're going to feel different, especially if they're younger. At 46 years old, I still struggle with it at times. So I can't imagine what it's like to be 13, 14, 15 watching this because at one point I was 13, 14, 15 and I didn't feel like I fit in, you know? And when I came out in 1990, I came out to a world that had been just riddled with HIV and AIDS. I can remember going out to a gay bar my first time and, you know, hearing people talk about, oh, this person that just recently passed away and this person just recently passed away. And so when I came out, it wasn't just the stigma of being gay. It was also the stigma of if you were gay, you had AIDS. And, you know, that was something that was a common conversation. You know, when I would come out to people, AIDS would come into the conversation. When we look at 20 to 30 years just before that, 10 to 20 years before that, right? We are looking at homosexuality in our country as being a mental disorder and it being diagnosed that way. We aren't that far away from that and we're still here trying to make things different. Um, I have grown up having to listen to joke after joke after joke after joke from people. You know, there's just constant jokes about gay people and gay people this and aren't they funny and guess what? They just sit around and they flip fans and, you know, whatever. And, you know, for me, it's about really being comfortable in my own skin to be who I want to be and say it's really nobody else's business and I just want to be happy, proud, and in love with myself and in love with the life that I have made for myself. But when I was growing up, I constantly had to sit and listen to jokes about this. And this is what is really important about the Logan Paul situation, okay? It's not that what his, his statement that he said was ignorant, which it was. It's not that he's the first person to ever make this statement because he's not, and I've heard it millions of times. Um, do I think that it just slipped from his mouth? No, I don't believe that. I think that Logan Paul is much more calculated than we give him credit for. I think that he knows what he's doing before he puts it out there. Um, you know, just the fact that on the heels of all this, he's tried to reach out to some major gay organizations to have a discussion with him. I'm not really sure why he feels the right to have that discussion with those organizations. I think there are YouTubers out there that have busted their asses to work much harder to sit down and have conversations with major gay organizations other than Logan Paul. And it's not our job to educate you, Logan. I'm just saying, okay? I am way too old and I am way too tired at this point in my life to feel like it is my job to educate anybody on who I love and my rights to do that. So, you know, it's, the whole thing is interesting to me, but I will, this is the part that's important to me, is that for years and years and years, you know, I grew up and I would hear all these jokes from people and I 
heard all the names. And many times when I was sitting in those circles and people would use those names, if you want to go to my bullying video, I list all of the names, okay? The names that are so hurtful and they do create scars in our skin and in our insides. But, you know, I would hear those words and I would sit there and because I didn't know what to do, sometimes I would laugh too. And then people would turn and they go, oh, I'm just joking, right? But see, I'm not laughing with you. If you're making a joke about who I am and I'm not laughing with you, that's called pain. That hurts, right? It was way until my 30s when, you know, I was in a work environment and people would make jokes about gay people and how funny that is, whatever, you know, that um, I realized at some point I was no longer going to continue to laugh at those jokes. Yes, there is some humor factor to that. And I believe that all stereotypes to some degree are based on a little bit of truth. But there isn't anything funny about that when you're the one being laughed at. And really what that is is a lack of comfort, a lack of understanding of yourself. You know, it's a lack of confidence to be able to stand up for yourself. And I today do not laugh at those jokes. Like, it, it's not funny to me anymore, you know? And Logan's joke is not funny to me. Not because it affects me, because, <laughs> listen, I'm a grown adult and I can handle that stuff. It, it's not funny to me for the kid out there that doesn't know, is it a joke or is he being real? You know, Logan, I think to a lot of people out there, and probably to you too, I'm just some funny old gay man that flips a fan and makes jokes. But I'll tell you what. I know you like these boxing matches to prove how much somebody is a man, so I'll bring one up on you, okay? Why don't you and I go to the boxing match and we take our masculinity there? Why don't we go to the boxing match and we show who is more of a man by being in that boxing match? You or a gay guy that flips a fan? Now, I'll tell you what I'll do when I get there, okay? As you've been, you know, working out and getting swole to beat somebody's ass, I'll sit in the boxing match and I'll just stand there and I'll take whatever punches you have to give me because for almost 46 years of my life, that's what I've done. When I was growing up in high school, when I was growing up in elementary school, I stood in that boxing match and I took your punches and I will continue to take those punches because I'm not going to feed into somebody else's ignorance today. I don't have to do that. I have a life that I have worked way too hard for and built way too hard to have the most amazing life that I have today. And if I could give any message to anybody out there struggling silently in the closet, no matter what your age, if you're five or if you're 50, let me tell you something that someday you too can have the most amazing life that is not a joke to other people. I think it's really important that people get out their stories, their coming out stories, their stories of struggle, so that people really, really understand it. I don't know, hashtag, you know, Dear Logan Paul, and everybody throw up a video talking about their coming out stories. Are coming out stories, no matter how difficult or how tragic or how simple or how easy, are all important because one person out there relates to it. And that is the danger of social media, the power that you have when you're affecting other people. And I have realized that. I really today realized the power of social media in a way that I never understood two years ago. But today I understand that. And Logan, I hope you understand it too. The power and the ability that you have to teach somebody that it is okay to feel good about themselves and their own skin no matter who they love. Because at the end of the day, why the fuck do we care why somebody or who somebody loves is different than us makes no sense to me. You have a lot of power to teach that to the younger generation who follows you, who loves you, who looks up to you, and yet you choose the opposite. I don't understand, but I hope at one point it changes. I love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.